G'day! In today's video, I'm going to be replacing the battery on a Acer Aspire. Where are we? E5 57 or 57.5. Now, as you can see here, there's no easy way to get to the battery, so I'm going to have to tear it down to get there. So to do that, we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and basically proceed to take out all these screws to begin with. If we're lucky, they're all going to be the same size. If we're unlucky, there may be some variation. We'll start off with here. And this should pop out now. There we go. And as you can see, if you need to upgrade the hard drive of the RAM, you can do that from here. But if you want to get dig deeper, we'll have to keep going. I'm going to put these screws actually in a different spot just so they don't get mixed up. So there is only one, two, three screws in this location. Next up, we'll take the hard drive out just simply by pulling that way and then up and we're out. That off to the side and we'll keep going. Next up will be the DVD burner. Take this screw out and then slide this forward. Bingo. But also if you were wanting to upgrade this machine, potentially upgrade your RAM here, which is located in these two slots. Pull these bits of metal tabs out. As you can see, we have a single four gig stick of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. So that one literally just slots in on an angle and folds down. So if we go in, push down, that is installed. And you can put one over here too. Do note about the little notch bit there. So you will have to put the orientation in the same way. Now we'll keep going with this battery removal. Now the battery in this one's actually fairly odd looking. Just a round cylinder tube with a few wires hanging off it, which we'll soon see in just a moment. While I'm here, I may also give the fan a clean and maybe some new thermal paste. I'll just see, see what I think when I get in there, as it is only here purely for a battery. Okay. Now we we'll do up some smaller screws, one, two, three along here. One, two, and three. There we go. I'm suspecting I'm gonna to have to also disconnect the antenna cable down the bottom here. Because I'm pretty sure these are built into the bottom plastic. So if I go over here and just pull and wiggle back, or we'll start it with my nail. Actually, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, there we go, out. I'm hoping that I can lever this open through here. Ah. You see, very brutal plastic. Not good, but I'll keep going. I suspect that, that was already pre-existing that one. And there's one screw down here that is remaining. One more here too. Whole bunch of screws. There we go. As you can see, we have one fan here. 
which this is replaceable. Also the charger port is replaceable if it gets damaged, it runs down to here. Funnily enough, it does have an actual option for an NVMe slot or NVMe car, uh, SSD in, in here. So that is a pretty handy option. As you can see, it also had, this model did have the potential to have a dedicated graphics card and the VRAM there. But here, I had the battery. And that's it sitting there. Pretty straightforward to come out. Let's grab my new one. It open. One new battery. So if we look at the build date on here, uh, there we go. So what's that? August 2020 compared to the original battery, which is March 2017. So three years newer, or three and a half. Installation's pretty straightforward. We'll start off getting it in the right way. There we go. Slide this in. Just line it up. Line it up, slide it forward into position. Next up goes the back first. Uh, doesn't really want to lock into position. I'll spin that around. Let's try it a different way. Connected, all good. So yeah, this machine does have the option to upgrade to an NVMe SSD if you would like to go down that path. I'm not sure if that would be an M.2 SATA or an M.2 NVMe. I'd probably go with the NVMe on this one. Anyway. So now it's a matter of a reassembly. Line it up. Do make sure that your speaker down here is sitting in the correct location. I'm going to start on this edge first and scoop that down under these jacks. Fold it down, back over. Click it into position. Go, and, and now it's time to put some screws back in. I'll start with these ones over here, under the DVD ROM, for working my way th through the rest of them. Most of this from here should be reasonably self-explanatory. Okay, put this back in. Okay. And a fairly yucky looking screw. Go. Rather than doing the boring screws, I'll switch to the ones that we don't actually know too much about, which will be this one here. That one down here as well. And now we need to reconnect the front speakers, or just the speakers in general. Slide in, just push it in. Should be pretty straightforward to get that one back into position. And next up, the hard drive. So we want to face it this way, here. We want to feed it in and down, and then pull it to the right. 
So right now I can slide, slide it into there. Cover goes on, click, there we go. Now I've got the one with the washer going on here. And there's two more that go on that cover. Now all of them do look to be the same length and there doesn't look to be any different size screws. So from here, you should be right just to put, proceed and go through all the screws that you've got and put them back into the cover. And that's how to replace the battery on your Acer Aspire E5 575. So this one's from 2017. So probably around early 2017, 20, or 2016, late 2016 to mid late 2017. So if you're one of these, you're probably getting due for a battery replacement. So that's how to replace the battery in this one. And also I just had a quick look at a few other different upgrades. So if you do want to get some extra speed out of it, definitely consider putting in a NVMe SSD as we found when we opened it up. If you don't want to go to the effort of opening it up, you can just put in a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. And that will go down here and reinstall windows from there and you should have a fairly zippy machine especially if your computer originally came out with like an i3 5 or 7 